relationship with two people is difficult enough to manage. Bring a third in, a mess that's magnified. You are not. There have been some moments on paternity court that fans are not fond of due to the ugly incidents and outcomes. This episode features a case with the potential of having you at the edge of your seat. You claim Mr. Morton fathered your seven-month-old son, Aaron. You say the only reason he denies paternity is because his girlfriend turned him against you. You're suing for 2,000 expenses. Yes, Your Honor. When a lady drags a man in a relationship to court over a paternity dispute, her primary interest is getting a father for her child. However, there is a severe issue to trash out when the defendant claims the timing of the relationship does not add up. First of all, Your Honor, anytime I want to have sex with him, I'm going to have sex with him. You know, we did what we did. And he's not the child in question. No. The case was already getting to the juicy parts without wasting much time. The plaintiff also disclosed a secret between the parties. But you also still continued a sexual relationship. I have sex with both of them. And his girlfriend? Yes, yes, Your Honor. If I don't want to have sex with her and I want to have sex with him, that's what happens. This new fact from the plaintiff hinted to Judge Lake that it would be an interesting case and set the tone for more to come. She was able to have sex with us is because I asked my boyfriend to have sex with her. Can you have sex with your pregnant baby mother because she's in need? That is not true. Before I even left, we was having sex. The plaintiff claims that the defendant had two girlfriends from the beginning and everyone was aware of that. Consensual or not, if I want to have sex with my baby father, your honor, it goes down. I'm you good. Did it. When I'm the last good. time you did it, when we did it, right? The defendant does not deny the relationship between them, but claims the timing is not right and he could not be the father. Yes, she so supposedly I understand had got pregnant your doubt. in May. She I never said I got pregnant in May, Your Honor. Okay, hold on. The defendant informs Judge Lake that he was intimate with the plaintiff during Mother's Day, and that backs his paternity doubts. The only person that I have unprotected sex with was my baby father. Just can't like you clock it, up, baby, can. you can't. We down. She had to keep reminding him that it's not yours, boy. Exactly, I but said. The plaintiff also claims that she does not have intercourse without protection. However, she seemed to have created an exception for the defendant and his partner for a reason. I don't have unprotected sex with nobody but the ones that I trust. But you had sex with me too, so I mean, yeah! you know, I like the way you do your thing, baby. Fine. That's I all. Know. The plaintiff then realizes that the defendant might be confused due to a specific incident from the past. Oh, no, yes. Let me explain my side of the story because I'm trying to, you know. Yeah. I had a whole miscarriage, Your Honor. You were pregnant. Before, but you like miscar- this was before, though. How he wasn't even away when I was pregnant. He was with me. So- the plaintiff claims she got a specific due date during antenatal, prompting her to inform the defendant that he was not the father initially. None of the appointments. I ain't show up to none of the, the doctor's Honor, I got appointments. A- so, Mr. Morton, you say that you didn't go to the appointment. So you went to the hospital when he was first born? Yes, I was there. To see him. The defendant insists he has his doubts about the paternity of the plaintiff's son due to the initial due date. But the defendant had shreds of evidence of him claiming the child. I doubt your honor, but he on Facebook, my son's hands always in the air. My son's hands are always in the air? (laughs) You wrote that? Yes. The plaintiff's case is based on the fact the defendant loves children, but has refused to step up for her son, despite him potentially being the father. At this point, Mr. Morton's mother stepped up as a witness for the plaintiff. For the most part, as far as support system, when she first had baby Aaron, she did have him early. So as far as support system, it was me and my daughter. Excuse me, I'm talking. It don't matter. It does. It don't. Let her disrespect your mother. Yeah, real bad. I'm yeah. sorry. Both parties established that the defendant never did anything for the plaintiff's baby. And Judge Lake reserved a ruling on that until after the DNA results. I really think that they never stopped dealing with each other from time to time. Baby Aaron is your, is your grandchild. Yes. The defendant expresses his disbelief at his mother's statement because she never allows him to explain the situation. When you read them DNA tests and they they tell you that that's that man's son, I'm going to child support. You got me twisted. The paternity doubts constitute a significant issue in the party's lives, but Judge Lake wants to know what would happen to their relationship after the DNA results. I have to ask this. Are you all going to continue? He's good. He's good with his his wife. (laughs) I'm not going to because... I have never, ever in a million years came at this woman like this. At this point, there was no need to delay the results any further. Judge Lake is ready to reveal the envelope's contents and settle the dispute between the parties. You are Aaron's father. Thank you! I need that paper so I can go down with child support tomorrow morning when I get up. The relationship between the parties has been one very messy situation, with many outbursts and exchanges in court. Judge Lake then decides to address that. 
to bring Ms. Parker into your relationship, relationship with two people is difficult enough to manage. Bring a third in, a mess that's magnified. In Judge Lake's paternity court, parties are typically partners who have doubts about the paternity of their child, but need the court to verify that. This case does not only feature a twist, but it also adds spice to the court today. Ms. Lindsay, you say that after years of lies from your mother, you believe you finally found him. You say everyone knows Mr. Dannenbrink is your father and you intend to prove that. The defendant then offers an initial explanation on why he thinks the plaintiff is not his daughter, which raises some eyebrows in the court. Mr. Dannenbrink, let's say there is no way you're her biological father. That's right, Your Honor. Uh, she disappeared on me. It just kept on for years that way. The plaintiff claimed that everyone in town knows the defendant is her father, sounding hilarious to Judge Lake, and she wanted to understand why. About 35 years ago, my mom does admit to having a child with Mr. Danabrink. When I was about 16 years old, I had asked my mother about that. She told me no, that it wasn't true. Upon hearing this, Judge Lake wants a clear picture of how the paternity doubt started with the plaintiff. What did you say? <laughs> well, at first I was like, what? You're wrong. She told me no, that he was not my father, it was my dad. The plaintiff has never met the man her mother claims is her father, but wants to get today's paternity result before knowing what to do about him. About four or five years ago, we all pretty much met up again. I knew that Mr. Danabrink was accused of being the child of my mother and him had started talking again more close. The plaintiff then explained her current relationship with the defendant, which immediately grabbed Judge Lake's attention. Um, we lived right next door to each other and spent a few holidays together and things like that. You believe he's your biological father? Yes. Said anything to him? Not really. The plaintiff's mother briefly explained her relationship with the defendant and their current status. Your Honor, this was like in the late 70s. He was involved with somebody else and he was involved with somebody else. Platonic relationship. We're best of friends. The defendant claims he did not know about the pregnancy and, therefore, had no suspicion when he had recently met the plaintiff's mother. She never told me that she was pregnant. She never told me I even had a child. Because he's not the father. But were you sleeping with Mr. Dannenbrink during the window of conception? Not as far as I know. The plaintiff then brought a calendar to back her claim and raised a probability that the defendant could be her father. For one, the day that I was born, the conception would be between May and June. My mother would be right at that time. I was born at a normal weight. The plaintiff's mother attempted to dispute this fact. Judge Lake sought clarification from the defendant. Do you agree with the date set forth on this calendar? Back then, it was hectic. I mean, back in the 70s, so I'm sure you, you understand. I did a lot of uh, drugs back then, so I really couldn't tell you. The defendant also claimed that he was not in a full-time relationship with the plaintiff's mother, and they had just met for intercourse. You all just were kind of sex partners. Yes. Just Correct, you are. Whatever. Friends with benefits. Friends with benefits. But were y'all yes. friends? Bump and go. Bump and go. Yeah. Okay, Jerome. Judge Lake also asked the plaintiff why she did not believe her mother when she said the defendant could not be the father. The doctors did say that I was born a month early. My mom does admit to having a child with Mr. Danabrink. I remember at one time it was that she was an older sister and um, she was still born at birth. The plaintiff claims her mother informed her of a child with the defendant but the child was a stillborn. However, the defendant denied knowing about this child, and the plaintiff's mother agrees she never informed him. It doesn't seem like you're believing a lot of your mother's testimony. I don't. I've never seen the papers, although I've asked a few times. There's no proof of her birth or death. Any record of, of her birth and death? The plaintiff seems never to believe anything her mother says in court, which worries Judge Lake. Because it's not the first time. She got pregnant and gave um, him up for adoption. I have another brother. I thought he died and I was like, what? At this point, the plaintiff's mother decided to explain how the other child's story happened because Judge Lake was also perplexed. I had gotten pregnant by a man that was married. The agreement was that he was going to take the baby. But you thought he had passed away? Yes, Your Honor. The plaintiff insists that she'd gotten so many untrue stories from her mother and there was no way she could believe the defendant is not her father unless the results say so. Judge Lake then asks her about her childhood. Very crazy as a child. I had a big hole, filled it with a lot of things that probably weren't the right thing, that father figure. The plaintiff's relationship with her stepfather lasted until he had a child with the plaintiff's mother. At this point, the plaintiff was left alone. I mean, I had my friends um, for, for a small time, which is kind of funny. My best friend, and mm -hmm. it just happened to be his son. Just friends, I hope. Yes, it does go through my head as to which ones I've dated might have been. The plaintiff informs Judge Lake that she had always been careful with men in her life because she had paternity doubts. 
She then presented a picture of herself and the defendant's son to show their resemblance. Mr. Dannenbrink, do you see a resemblance? I do not. What's your relationship like with Mr. Dannenbrink? He's kind of like a father figure to a point. Kind of joke about him being my dad. People will say, oh, you guys look alike or something like that. Despite not knowing the plaintiff is his potential daughter, the defendant has always been like a father figure to her and even allows her children to call him grandpa. They don't have grandpas that are alive. I told my children that they're more than welcome to call him grandpa. That's right. The plaintiff also submitted a letter to the court, and when she was asked to read it, it raised deep emotions. Um, whose blood runs through me? Where do I get my eye color from? Where do I get my nose? Why did you leave? Did you even know about me? And would you have been proud of me? Why was I not good enough? The defendant informed Judge Lake that he does not think the plaintiff is his daughter, but hopes she is. Then, it was time to reveal the envelope's contents and verify the plaintiff's paternity. Mr. Dannenbrink, you are not her father. 